get the feeling that we still have a lot to do to um, raise awareness of the industry, of the type of work that is done in Brazil in visualization and, and things that can be applied today in uh, a real life in industrial applications. And also, uh, I, I think part of the problem of uh, the, the new techniques is um, having uh, better visual representations of the visualization because we can extract patterns with, with very high precision and, and good, good uh, computational um, cost these days, but um, maybe the way we are showing it to the user is not either very intuitive per se or um, not um, very intuitive to that particular user or that particular application in, in, in that, that you have in mind. So maybe uh, find new ways of showing the results of these visualizations is, is a way to go to make these techniques more um, uh, uh, easily handled by final users. Okay, so I'll just give an example. Um, the thing is, I have to handle the, the software and at the same time hold the, the microphone. So I'll, I'll just shout, okay? So basically, can you hear me at the back there? I know that it's recording and everything, but that's, that's how I can do it. So basically, what we did a few years ago in, in a workshop like this was to ask people to volunteer their, their publications in visualization in Brazil. That was, what, four years ago? more than four years ago. We, very few people did that, particularly because uh, they were not there in the, in the workshop, we tried to divulge through various means. So they volunteered some of their work and we got 252 papers uh, after insisting quite a lot for about two years. Then I got my students in the visualization course to go after each one of those people and get their papers in and the papers of the people they contribute, that they, they publish with. We had to cut down on some points, so we, we left out uh, work on, on meshing, right? Because there is a lot of work on meshing in Brazil. Okay, so basically, uh, what you see here, but I introduced the, the, the problem first. I mean, <laughs> 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 Because this 
got into the big rap. Okay? It's not only people in the south of Park, but then it's, it's also all in the area they talk it, but also our own businesses from different el elsewhere. So this is a situation that we want to change a little bit, transform people and the big rap bigger. And we want more people to work on this organization that's the way we um, we maybe will uh, develop uh, more the area. Eventually, things are going to go to the family story. But I'm giving you material to <laughs> work on. Thank you. Yeah, this example actually shows the uh, importance of interactive visualization. So visualization um, should not be just a static picture. It should enable exploration, right? Um, so to promote visualization or to, you know, I, so I've been working with scientists uh, directly, closely since I was a student. So when I was a student, I was very lucky. My advisor just bring the scientists to um, but um, if you look at the, uh, <coughs> just look at your campus, right? Many corner, far corner, there are people there, they know nothing about advanced visualization. So they certainly can, I mean, many of them can benefit from this new technology. So it takes great effort from us to make them aware, you know, educate. So I think one effective way is just to run some workshop Right, local workshop, and then to bring people. Once they see some good example, they will, they will want to work with you. And you know, not every collaboration will be successful. But then I think that uh, that's a most effective way to start. And then of course, you know, we publish. You know, in fact, uh, more and more people just come to to me. For example, they just call me, send me email. I never met them before. There's a certain few people, they actually pay attention to our public. They start paying a, a, a attention to our publication. They found out, hey, we create this capability. So they call and say, hey, we need your help. So it happened uh, more and more. So it's very, very encouraging. But again, it still takes great effort. Uh, in my case, when I, when I uh, get, for example, a $500,000 grant, right? I, I, I usually um, uh, use like one third of money to start another new project and try to work with a, a, a new group of people. And so uh, most of our research is really driven by data, right? By application. So, so I've been constantly looking for new application, new data set. Uh, so you will need to do the same. Yeah. Don't just use the data set, everybody. <laughs> Everybody else is using, right? Try to locate your own appli new application. There are just tremendous opportunities there. You just need to look and just go find them. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I, I wanted to start mentioning that uh, Fidel combined what we were going to say, so we might have some overlap with what I'm going to say and what uh, Rose and me or uh, Juan you and I is going to talk about. So uh, some things that I want to, to talk about very briefly a couple of slides that I have. Uh, this is the third why this workshop we had, uh, for you that don't know, we had one in 2007 and 2010 and 2012, that's the third one. All three were co-organized by Urquiz and ECMC. So it, it, we, we did that. And uh, the other point that I want to mention, it, it, uh, Rosani mentioned that there is some confusion on the term visualization visualization and some of this confusion is because the translation to Portuguese there are some words that translate into visualization viewing translates into Portuguese into visualização is the viewing pipeline pipeline visualization some, sometimes people talk about uh, rendering and uh, they say oh this is my visualization it, it's not visualization it's just rendering so when we, we, we talk about visualization here we're talking about mainly what's being published in uh, VIS and AeroVIS SciVIS InfoVIS or our, our visual analytics. So that's that's what we are really considering visualization here. So uh, when I, 
I was thinking on giving the slot. In fact, I, I, I delayed to prepare this during this week because I want to think more doing staying here, talking about the present and the future. Because we do visualization, we look at data. I thought that to talk about the present, we need to look at data. And the future will be some ideas that I have. And looking at the data, I selected one possible way to look at the data, which is very objective, is, is looking at the publications that we have um, from 2008 in the main conferences in the area. So I, I, I did this manually, so I might, I, I didn't include UVCG here, but I, I put the papers in this week, Eurovis, and two small conferences, e.g. parallel graphics on visualization, plus this. So in 2008, this is the Brazilian groups. We had uh, two books uh, papers in uh, this week and one ECMC. Oh, ECMC, I'm going to say in Portuguese. And uh, 2009, we have one Burgess, one ECMC. 2010, ECMC got ahead in three, three papers. 2011, they got two and one honorable mention paper. So, and 2012, everybody struck up. <laughs> so, <laughs> for this, so, so I'm talking about the last five years, we have 10 papers. So it's like uh, Brazil has two papers a year in average. So for this, which is a very high competitive conference. Eurovis, 2008, ECMC won. 2009 was not a good year for us. 2010, Burgis had two, and Wolf FFJ Marroquin is there? There, and I had one. And uh, I put it in red because I don't like the red, but I, I like FFJ. <laughs> <laughs> in uh, 2011, uh, Burgess had one, ECMC had two, and uh, 2012, you guys were amazing, had uh, four papers at Eurovis this year. And uh, your guys are being cons consistent as, as, as we, you, you had seven at Eurovis, and we three at Burgess and Dwight Fajot, I just wanted to say. Uh, maybe, yeah, yes, this week I'm, I'm Saipi's info. So EG, PGV, we, we had a paper before that, but uh, uh, we had one in 2011, which was selected uh, like best paper of the conference. And uh, 2012, Burgess also had one, so two. And uh, Pacific Vis, Gustav had one in 2011, just one, but it was the best of the conference. So, so, <laughs> so that's the data that we have for, for these groups. And uh, for the future, I, I just outlined some ideas in, uh, what we want, and uh, what Hosan said, we want to maintain, if possibly increase, the participation, the, this number of papers in this week. They are, they are very highly competitive conference. To have like two papers a year is very hard, but uh, if we can uh, keep that or increase, and uh, we are going to do that if we uh, increase the, uh, we, if we do our, our, our part, continue the, the work in our groups, but uh, to promote visualization in the other groups in Brazil, as and uh, in a way, we're doing that. We organized three of these workshops already from 2007, 2010, 2012. Maybe we we'll need to discuss uh, when we're going to do the next one. And uh, uh, maybe next year or in two years, I don't know how frequent we need to do. Uh, the, what Kuhlima uh, was saying that we need to do this in, in our uh, local university, but uh, I think that would be nice to have like a more technical workshop on discussing challenges problems on trying to integrate with other scientists and uh, with industry, as uh, Rosalind mentioned. Uh, increase collaborations with groups abroad. We have one more here, so everybody please talk to him. Maybe you guys will have a paper or, or try to increase. <laughs> well, every year we try to bring some somebody from, from outside with him, him here who we'll talk. And uh, the other thing that, uh, the other idea, we, we had something that with Gustavo, but we can have that those summer schools that uh, January, like select a topic that we think that's important. Try to, to create some maps, try to, to bring people from the other universities and uh, try to leverage uh, the, the knowledge that we have built. Okay? I did it five minutes before. Perfect. 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 Okay, I'm going to give you a slightly different point of view. Uh, it's coming from this year, 40 years in this field, and from having looked at what has been happening. There are two words that I'm going to give you that I'll repeat again and again and again. Popularization and democratization. Number one, in computers. I started 
we wrote code in machine language and assembly language. Every, everything was command line. There were 1% of 1% of 1% of the population got close to it. The moment there were GUIs, 90% or more of the population uses computers. Look at the internet. 1967, there was an internet. Nobody knew about it in 1993, 95. What did it? The World Wide Web. Again, democratization, popularization. Today, a lot of people who will tell you that they won't touch a computer are carrying this, which is a computer. So again, we're seeing the same trend. In visualization, all of you, with very few exceptions, talk to scientists and about scientists and about science data. But think about it this way. Every one of this is a sensor. And everybody today is collecting data and producing data, whether they want it or they don't want it. So there's a lot of data that's being generated, and you can do a lot with it. Uh, I want to tell you something else. With all of this, your big data will look little compared to all this data. <laughs> so <laughs> what I want to make you think of is Think about a common user, not a computer user, but anybody walking around, taking pictures, shopping, looking for the next place to stop to eat. All of that is data. Everybody is now collecting, producing, but also will be consuming data because all this data is going to come back. If you look today at a typical publication like the Wall Street Journal or Wired, the mobile version is already interacting. And they are starting to put visualizations in a lot of those stories to show you how the, the deficit is going, how the exchange rate, commerce, labor, you name it. All of that is popular information that everybody wants to consume, but they also all produce. So think about it this way, no computer. But yes, computing. And the computing happens pretty much everywhere. In my pocket, on my palm, and when that's not enough, then it goes up to the cloud to Quan Liu's supercomputer. And that's me. <laughs> well, thank, thank you for the talk. Uh, there is time for questions. Questions? Or comments, yeah, questions or comments, of course, for sure. Um, it's, uh, it's not a revenge on the red thing, don't worry. <laughs> so uh, I have a comment because, well, I, I'm the only one outside in that, that, that <laughs> table there. And I did some visualization work, and that was my last one with my collaborator, Andre Massimo, and he got Paris, so a bit gosh best. And I think a problem that we saw on, on doing that work, and it's, it's, I think it's why I haven't done anything more from there or, or before that, is that most people don't know what the problem is. I think we're very good on um, showing people what our solution to the problem was. That is a paper or um, results or look how I got that data and I made something very nice. But we don't, we are, I think we're not doing a very good job on showing people what the problem is. So people sometimes they say, oh, I'm going to work on visualization and I have to, you know, volume rendering and then I have the SPX data and, the, and then you get sick of it. <laughs> the same data set all the time and then you say, I'm going to do something else. Well, maybe I did that, maybe. <laughs> I don't know everyone. So maybe one thing is to um, improve on how we show people not how we s solve something, but why something is important in solving, or why that data is challenging to work with. What is the problem with working with that data? Because yes, if I go to the university and then I go to some group, they say, oh, please make me see my data. <laughs> it's hard to see. And then you go there, and then you learn, and then you publish a paper and you show people, look what I did. But maybe before that, I don't know how, maybe workshop and things like that. You say, oh look, people are trying to visualize this, this, this. I don't know how. Does anyone has an idea? And then maybe we can share data before um, work on the problem. 
and not after. Well, I don't know. It's maybe my feeling about um, why I'm not working with them. Let, let, let me make a comment on that. Uh, that Anna no, 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 from Stefan here has been giving some thoughts on this uh, data center. solutions to problems that sometimes we don't know what they're going to be applied to. And I've been there a lot. I mean, I thought about an, an algorithm. Oh, I have an idea to do this. And now, oh, let me find the data to validate what I did. And then, and, and then uh, I know that you guys share the feeling. So in, 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 in scientific fields and in this, this is uh, much more of a problem. We, we need to start looking at the data and try to understand the issues. And, uh, and then this uh, point that I understand the issues, what they cannot see, then we can go back and try to come up with solutions. It's hard for us because it's uh, interdisciplinary work, right? We have to, to, if you go to work in medical field, you have to learn a lot about the other fields and, uh, and uh, all this uh, turbulence and uh, combustion and all uh, that you have. Another comment? Yeah, probably this is the last most Sorry, this is not a very short panel. Relax for now. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, yeah. My my comment uh, is the following: more than try to convince us, no, all the people to change our minds and start to work in a new field. That's very difficult because most of us are very comfortable with our research. We are writing our papers, publishing our papers, and getting our grants. So I I don't have much expectation on change. Uh, uh, might for a lot of people, no? that's very difficult to do. However, I think we should try to introduce you know, some mechanisms on the undergrad courses in such a way that we can convince young people to start to work on visualization. So this is the, the point that is, uh, I believe it's very important. So uh, we are trying to, to do that in, at uh, ICMC, to introduce visualization courses on the undergrad uh, curriculum so uh, I would like to encourage you know, the, uh, computer, the Brazilian Computer Society to include that topic you know, in its official uh, yes, you know, so the big challenges and in, in, in the official uh, curriculum of the Brazilian Computer Society should include visualization as one of the important topics. I just want to say that the centrality I was measuring there is between us. <laughs> <laughs> Any other comment? Uh, yeah, this, nice. This, this, this would be the... the <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I had worked a little bit on visualization some years ago and then I shifted to another major topic. Um, from some presentation that I see right now, it seems that the focus has moved from the research or new basic visualization uh, solution to managing complexity, managing big data, so parallelizing, uh, moving, shifting, and this gives a little bit of the impression that we have a consolidated technology and we are trying just to make it more fast. Is this true or not? I think it's important also for young generation to understand if there is space for advancing the basic techniques or it's just a matter nowadays or improving the, uh, the user interface, improving the speed, but not inventing a new flow field visualization, a new volume rendering visualization as it has been done 10 years ago, maybe. Uh, I'll, uh, I feel that both things are true. Uh, uh, flow visualization, medical visualization, uh, what uh, used to be called uh, scientific visualization is actually very mature these days and in need for improvement of, of the available techniques. But there's still a lot of space for new inventions in, in even that more mature uh, uh, subfield of visualization. And there's the whole 
the whole area of abstract visualization where everything still to be a lot of things are still to be invented and 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 made available for for general use and actually applied to real real life case at least that's my view there's a lot of work in every area uh, of visualization for all tastes <laughs> if you accept my observation that every person is is going to be walking around being at least one and I believe a thousand sensors, then the problems are going to be very different than what we have encountered until now. So there will be a lot of room for real basic innovation to deal with that level and s type of problems. No doubt about it. Yeah, this, this was the last comment we have because there is a second. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah, thanks for our...